Seahawks fans, we are just 23 subscribers away from hitting the 24.2K subscriber mark. So let's get that done before the end of the day here on February 6th. If you're watching the Pro Bowl, I am sorry for you. That kind of sucks. Not a great game. So instead, watch this mailbag answering all your questions here on the Seattle Seahawks. Today's Seahawks mailbag is made possible by our friends over at Manscaped. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, and Manscaped wants to make sure you are feeling and looking your best for that night. 20% off and free shipping on all their incredible men's grooming products at manscaped.com. Promo code Seahawks. First up in the mailbag from Striker.YouTube. Is Rashad Penny or Chris Carson more important? It's a good question. Um, depends on which one you get, I, I guess. Uh, we've seen both of these guys now for four years. Both of them have missed time due to injuries. Carson has been the more productive runner, and Penny, in part because of his incredible back five games or so of the season, has offered you more big plays, more explosions. I would argue that Carson is your better runner, but he's coming off the neck issue. Rashad Penny's now a free agent. Carson has missed 32 games with injury in five years. Rashad Penny's missed 24 games in four years. So there's a lot of missed time for both of these guys, which to me is indicative of the type of player you don't necessarily want to commit big time money to. Either way, you didn't do it with Chris Carson. That was a cheapish deal. Can you do something similar with Rashad Penny? The duo, if they're both healthy, could be one of the best ones in the NFL. But they've been inconsistent, they've been banged up, and they haven't ever really gelled the way I think Pete Carroll, John Schneider thought they were going to. And this offseason, you might have to pick one. You could cut Chris Carson amid his injury concerns. I, I am worried about the neck. Neck injuries scare me in the NFL. Penny, meanwhile, is a free agent. I wonder if a cheaper one-year deal makes sense for him. So hypothetically speaking, and you might not have to, but for this case, we'll make you. If you had to pick only one of these backs to kind of answer Stryker's original question, who would you pick? Type C for Chris Carson or type in P for Rashad Penny. This will be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there. Let me know. From Joshua Height. Say we keep both Ethan Posick and Dwayne Brown, who is a veteran center that could challenge Posick at center, or that would uh, grave in free agency, sign, I think it meant sign, or, or grab maybe, I don't know, the VE, weird type, who knows. And who is a rookie right tackle that could challenge Karan for the starting position? What would that offensive line look like? Okay, good question. Offensive line focused. The options at center. Um, if you see, here are the four best guys, and... This is really less challenging, more they are your starting center. Bradley Bozeman coming off his best year ever for the Baltimore Ravens, a quality starter. Ryan Jensen is aging, but he's probably still a top 10 center. Brian Allen's one that intrigues me given his ties. Shane Walford from the Rams, they're a bit tight on money. Allen might be your somewhat doable guy. Jason Kelsey, I mean, borderline Hall of Famer, frankly, for the Philadelphia Eagles. So you're probably not going to get him. I'd say Brian Allen is the name there to really watch. Maybe Bozeman if you want to have some flexibility to kick somebody out to guard. Right tackle, meanwhile, four names I'll mention here. Daniel Falele out of Minnesota. I mean, just a massive human being. 6'8 and change, 387. Stupid, stupid big offensive lineman. Nicholas petit Friere has played left tackle and right tackle. There's some value there. Darian Kennard, some view him as a guard. That could be a red flag. Max Mitchell, by the way, is a good name to keep an eye out for. That Louisiana offense, uh, excuse me, not, yeah, Louisiana, not Louisville. I should have made that L.A., not L.O.U. Louisiana offense, the Raging Cajuns, they can run the football like nobody's business. I love their offensive line, their scheme. Mitchell, I think, could be a really good fit for what Pete Carroll wants to do on offense. So of these names, maybe Mitchell makes the most sense given your draft capital. If you do that, I mean, then you're going to start your veteran at center. Dwayne Brown's still your left tackle. I would bet one of these rookies actually starts over Karan because just investment made there. And then you keep Damian Lewis and Gabe Jackson as your offense guards. Frankly, not a bad offseason plan at the offensive line spot. Now, today's show, like I mentioned, powered by our friends over at Manscaped. 
Look, we can do the math on when my baby girl was born. She is almost three months old, and we are almost to Valentine's Day. Put the math together. It starts to click a little bit. You can have some similar success by using Manscaped this Valentine's Day. You can get 20% off and free shipping when you use promo code SEAHAWKS on all their products from the Performance Package, the Lawnmower 4.0, which is part of the Performance Package. 20% off at manscaped.com. The Lawnmower 4.0, it's the number one men's grooming tool on the market. I use it on the regular because it just makes everything feel better, look better, and a little bit bigger, for being honest, as well. Kind of like when you trim down a, a tree, you give a little more space, and then eh, the base looks bigger. All right, promo code SEAHAWKS at manscaped.com. Link will be in the comments section and in the description. From Dat Fat Rat. Okay. Uh, could Stone Forsythe be the starting right tackle if Brandon Shell does not re-sign? I mean, I think the more likely outcome there is that Jake Curran w w would be your starting right tackle in that scenario, given that he played more than Stone Forsythe. That I, I wonder if Seattle wants to make Forsythe a potential left tackle of the future. Now, he played 14 snaps. Now, those were right tackle. So he did get the opportunity in the back end of the season on that side of the football. So I, I do want to acknowledge that as the situation. He was more of a left tackle coming out of Florida. And in the preseason, that's where he spent all of his reps, at left tackle. I think the right tackle reps were more of a desperate situation scenario. So I would say Forsyth could be your Dwayne Brown replacement. I don't want to gamble on a seventh-round pick with, you know, 14 snaps. If you do... It does make Forsyth a prime breakout candidate. So with that in mind, I want you to name a breakout candidate for the Seattle Seahawks this upcoming year. Obviously a younger guy, but let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Batman fan 20, Batman. Seahawks signed Chandler Jones and Von Miller and trade for an offensive line. Okay, so a lot to break down here. Um, offensive line trade, I'm in. Let's ride. I'm not going to complain about that get a, a tackle, a center, and I'm all for that. I think that's a good idea to help protect Russ and keep your offense going. Chandler Jones and Von Miller. Do you need both of those guys? Because those guys, even though they're older players, have been some of the most impactful producers in the NFL in recent years. And it might surprise you that Chandler Jones has been third in the most sex since 2016. I have long argued Chandler Jones is one of the most underrated players in the NFL. Consistently produces double digit sacks more or less every single year. Now, Jones had five sacks in week one against the Tennessee Titans. Was dominant early front row to win defensive player of the year. Only five and a half sacks though over the team's final 16 games. I think opposing defense has adjusted a little bit and took him away more. I love what Chandler Jones brings, even at his advanced age. My question here, do you want to bring in Chandler Jones, pay him, let's just say, even on the low side, $15 million per year, which I, I think is less than what he'll get on the open market, but we'll pretend teams, players want to take less so they get okay with the deal. You're going to pay Chandler Jones $15 million, and then turn around and play Vaughn Miller just as much. Vaughn's been linked to Seattle before, really more or less in speculative, hey, team could sign these three guys types of articles. So that makes it a, a bit tricky for me. Look, Von Miller spent time with the Rams and the Broncos this past year before the trade, nine and a half sacks. We know he's awesome. One of those guys, if you can get him on a team-friendly deal, awesome. Let's ride. I think you can get by with some of your other edges and invest, you know, maybe in a, in resetting Quandre Diggs, in investing in the impact defense tackle if you can find one. So I would not complain if they got one of those guys. I don't see the need, though, to add both of them. I want to use Jamal Adams more as a blitzer, as a pass rusher. I want to let Dalton or C Carlos Dunlap and Darrell Taylor get pass rush reps. I don't necessarily need both of these guys. So pick one of them to sign for me. Who would it be? Type in J for Chandler Jones, or type in M for Vaughn Miller. Folks, we're going to keep you covered on everything going on around the Seattle Seahawks this offseason. Some rumors like Gus Bradley, which of course did not come true, made me sad news as well when, like, when the Seahawks uh, promoted Clint Hurt to the uh, defensive coordinator position. Russell Wilson 
I don't want to trade him, but the buzz is out there. I know you guys are frustrated by it. I get it. I don't want to trade him, but the, the, the rumors are real, folks. So subscribe now for free videos all off-season long. The link is right there below, youtube.com slash SeahawksTV. If you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe. Ah, striker again. If there is even a chance of Russ leaving, is Deshaun Watson a trade option? So step number one is because I don't think Houston would take Deshaun Watson. They kind of want to give Davis Mitchell a chance, and the timeline doesn't fit as well. You could you have to trade Russ first, get assets back, and then go shop Deshaun Watson, and you're still a bit light, I think, on the assets. And this, you can't trade for Deshaun right now. He's still under investigation. The stack is just out there. I, I, I cannot bring in Deshaun Watson right now and say, like, oh, yeah, here's our franchise guy. Look, he's a franchise QB, but he could still be facing major criminal charges. So I, I, I can't touch him. I can't do it. If you're, if you're moving on from Russell Wilson because he wants out, because it makes no sense for you as a team to do it, but if Russ wants out of here, which I don't think he does, but he's keeping his door open, I don't think Watson ends up being a feasible replacement for you. So worst case scenario, again, I do not want to trade Russ. If he is gone, who do you want as Seattle's next QB? Let me know in the comments section. Uh, from Quaisal Mealy, I don't know that might not be how you pronounce it, but I tried it. Could the Seahawks trade Russ? If so, who do we get instead? All right, note number one, because I want to be clear, because I know that you guys are annoyed by the Russ trade questions. I understand they're frustrating. Don't trade Russ. That this, in the end, I really think comes down to what Wilson wants. If he says, I don't want to be here, then you got to trade him. I don't think Seattle wants to shop Russell Wilson at this point because they want to win football games. So I would extend Russell Wilson, pay him, make him happy, and then keep him in the fold. If you move on, some options. We mentioned Deshaun Watson. Kirk Cousins is a veteran, a bit overpaid for me. Jimmy Garoppolo's cheaper. We know what he can do. It makes some sense. A guy like Baker Mayfield could really intrigue me. You make him part of your deal. You send Russ to Cleveland. You get Baker Mayfield. Give him a year, two years, see what he can do. If not, then you draft somebody, but at least he's young and fairly cheap. Uh, you could go full Jared Goff trade and get Ryan Tannehill. Eh? You could also trade him for assets and get a top 10 pick and draft a, a Malik Willis, a, a Matt Corral, a Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter, someone along those lines. I don't want to do it. But that's your path, I think, if you had to replace him. Folks, if you want to get your questions on a future mailbag, use hashtag Seahawks right now in the comments section.